What if I told you everything you thought you knew about the universe is wrong? What if space isn't empty? What if time doesn't flow like we think it does? And what if the universe isn't infinite, but a simulation, a loop, or something we can't even imagine? In the next 15 minutes, we'll take you through real scientific discoveries that are changing our understanding of reality itself. We begin with a single world, our world, Earth, a tiny blue sphere wrapped in clouds, orbiting an average star in a quiet corner of the Milky Way. To us, it feels vast. Oceans stretch for thousands of miles. Mountains rise into the sky. Continents hold billions of lives. And yet, in the cosmic scale, it's smaller than a grain of dust. As we zoom out, the scale shifts rapidly. Our moon drifts away in silence. The planets follow. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn with its rings, Neptune spinning slowly in the cold. And then, the sun fades into the black. It becomes just another point of light among hundreds of billions in the Milky Way galaxy. But this is only the beginning. We rise further, moving beyond our galactic home. We see the Milky Way in full, a spiral of stars rotating gracefully, its central bulge glowing with intense energy. Black holes hide at its center. Trillions of planets orbit suns will never reach. But even the Milky Way is just one among many. As our view continues to expand, the true structure of the universe begins to reveal itself. Galaxies group together in clusters. Those clusters form filaments, cosmic threads. Together, they create a web, the cosmic web, a structure stretching hundreds of millions of light years across, made not only of galaxies, but of dark matter, shaping everything silently, invisibly. And then we reach the edge of what we can see, the observable universe, a sphere roughly 93 billion light years in diameter, limited not by what exists, but by what light has had time to reach us. Beyond this limit lies the unobservable. Not empty space, but potentially more galaxies, more stars, possibly even other universes. If theories like cosmic inflation or the multiverse hypothesis are true. What lies beyond the observable boundary is one of the greatest scientific questions of our time. Some scientists believe the universe is infinite, without edge or end. Others argue it's finite, a bubble in a larger multiverse, a single droplet in a vast cosmic ocean. And some suggest something even stranger, that space and time themselves may break down beyond this horizon, or that the very fabric of reality ends here, not with a bang, but with a limit of perception. And yet, for all its vastness, the universe is still governed by elegant laws, Physics applies everywhere we look, from the orbit of planets to the expansion of galaxies. This harmony suggests something deeper, that the universe is not chaos, but structure. Not random, but mathematical. Some researchers even speculate that what we're seeing, the order, the patterns, the constants, may be evidence of a designed system, or a simulation. The further we zoom out, the more distant, cold, and mysterious it becomes, and yet, the more beautiful. And now, Earth, our home, is just a speck, lost in a haze of billions of galaxies. From here, it disappears completely. The universe becomes a single point of light, and then even that vanishes. And all that remains is the question. He floats, alone. No sound, no weight, no up or down. Only the slow drift of a human being suspended in the dark ocean of the universe. His visor reflects the stars. Thousands of them. Millions. And yet, he feels smaller than ever. Behind him, far behind, Earth is no longer visible. The planets are gone. The sun is gone. All that remains is blackness, pierced by points of light that have traveled billions of years just to reach him. And now, he's here, drifting gazing outward, as if searching for something beyond the stars. What does it mean to be a conscious observer in a universe so large, so old, so fundamentally indifferent? This question has haunted physicists and philosophers alike. Modern cosmology tells us that the universe is 13.8 billion years old, that we are made from stardust, the recycled atoms of ancient suns 
that the iron in our blood, the calcium in our bones, were once part of a dying star's final breath. But beyond the poetry, there's a deeper mystery. Why is there something instead of nothing? As the astronaut floats in silence, he represents more than a person. He is humanity itself, a symbol of our unquenchable curiosity. We launch telescopes, build particle accelerators, write equations that reach further than our hands ever could, all in pursuit of answers. And the answers we find? They often lead to bigger questions. Space, it turns out, is not just empty distance. It has structure. It stretches. It warps. It carries energy. It even has a temperature. The cosmic microwave background is still glowing from the birth of the universe, a faint afterglow of the Big Bang. But what came before the Big Bang? Some theories propose a quantum foam, a seething field of probability and randomness where particles blink in and out of existence. Others suggest a previous universe collapsed in on itself, triggering ours in a cycle of cosmic rebirth. And then, there's the idea that the universe needs an observer to exist. In quantum mechanics, particles exist in multiple states until they're observed, a concept known as wave function collapse. Could it be that consciousness itself is woven into the structure of reality? Our lone astronaut may not know the math behind this, but he feels it. In the stillness of deep space, there's a strange intimacy with the cosmos, as if something ancient is staring back. He blinks, a tear forms, not from fear or sadness, but from awe. Because even though he's seen the data, read the mission briefings, trained for this, nothing could prepare him for what it feels like to float between galaxies, to be a speck of awareness inside an endless void. The stars he sees, many of them are already gone. Their light only now arriving, a final message from the past. And the ones that are forming, he'll never witness them. Light travels fast, but space is expanding faster. Distant galaxies are being pulled away so quickly that their light will never reach us. Not in a billion years, not ever. We are surrounded by cosmic isolation. And the farther we look, the lonelier it becomes. And yet, here he is. One astronaut, one mind, one point of consciousness in a universe that may contain billions of galaxies and possibly infinite versions of itself. Some scientists speculate that the universe is not just vast. It may be one of countless others, each with different laws, different outcomes, and in only a tiny fraction of those, might life exist? So what are the odds that we are here? What are the odds that a species could arise, build ships, break gravity, and send one of its own into the deep, statistically, astronomically low? And yet, it happened. He floats, still, no engine, no gravity, just a thin suit between him and the vacuum of existence. And still, he looks forward, not back because the greatest mystery is not the stars. It's that we can even ask the question. He floats alone, suspended in a void where time seems meaningless. Behind him, Earth is gone. The planets, the stars he once knew, all swallowed by distance. Ahead, only darkness, punctuated by cold ancient light, light that began its journey billions of years ago. And in this silence, a single question echoes. Why is he here? Science tells us we are made from stardust, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our cells, all forged in the hearts of dying stars. The Big Bang gave birth to everything, matter, space, even time itself. But it also left us with a boundary, the observable universe. And beyond that, we know nothing. Our best theories suggest we may not be the only universe, that there may be infinite others, each with different physical laws, different outcomes. In some, life never emerged. In others, stars never formed. And in this one, somehow, we exist. Quantum mechanics teaches us that particles exist in all possible states until observed. Could consciousness itself shape reality? Could his gaze, right now, be collapsing the wave function of the cosmos? 
He drifts, not in fear, but in awe. Because in a universe where everything seems cold and mechanical, the fact that he is aware, that he can wonder, is the most profound mystery of all. And as a single tear floats inside his helmet, the stars look back, unchanged, ancient, and waiting. What if everything we experience, everything we touch, see, even think, isn't made of matter, but of information? This isn't just a philosophical idea. It's becoming one of the most radical and promising frontiers of modern physics. The idea that the universe itself might be a giant quantum computer and reality at its core is nothing more than structured data. Let's start with a strange fact. When something falls into a black hole, it disappears from view. But does its information vanish too? For decades, scientists believed it was lost forever. But that idea violated one of the most sacred principles in physics. That information cannot be destroyed. Then came a breakthrough. Physicist Leonard Susskind and others proposed something revolutionary. That the information is still there, encoded on the surface of the black hole's event horizon. This became known as the holographic principle. It suggests that everything that happens inside a volume of space can be described by data that lives on its surface, just like a hologram. If this is true, then our three-dimensional world might just be a projection from a deeper, two-dimensional layer of encoded information. But it gets even weirder. In 2013, physicists discovered something astonishing. They connected two of the most powerful ideas in physics, quantum entanglement and geometry. It turns out that the fabric of space itself, the distance between things, the shape of space-time, may emerge from quantum entanglement patterns. This means that space, the very concept of here and there, could be built from the relationships between pieces of information, not from physical stuff. It would mean that we live in a universe where the illusion of thingness is created by patterns of logic, not particles, not atoms, but code. Think about it. What if the universe operates like a vast operating system? The laws of physics are the rules of the program, Matter is processed data, and consciousness, our ability to observe, to question, is part of how the system runs. Some scientists go even further. They say that reality isn't just describable in terms of information, it is information. That at the smallest scales, the Planck length, where quantum gravity becomes dominant, space-time is pixelated, like the pixels on your screen, but unimaginably small. And just like pixels, these bits of space and time may flicker on and off, guided by logic, not randomness. In fact, when researchers analyzed the cosmic microwave background, the oldest light in the universe, they found strange patterns of fluctuations. Some say they resemble digital noise, artifacts, errors. Could this be the imprint of a deeper code, a glitch in the system? Some think so. Physicist John Archibald Wheeler famously said, it from bit, meaning everything physical, it, emerges from bit, the most basic unit of information. If Wheeler was right, then the Big Bang wasn't just the beginning of matter, but the initial boot up of a system with rules, structure, and feedback loops. So what does this mean for us? It means that your memories, your experiences, your choices, are not just electrical patterns in your brain. They are configurations of information in a system that is much larger than we can comprehend. It also means that time may not be what we think it is. In an informational universe, time is not a flowing river, but a sequence of states, like frames in a simulation. And if that's true, the past may still exist in some form, and so might the future. All of this may sound like science fiction, and to be fair, the simulation hypothesis, the multiverse, the holographic universe, none of these are proven. But they're no longer fringe ideas. They're actively debated by leading cosmologists, theoretical physicists, and quantum researchers around the world. Elon Musk famously said the odds that we're not living in a simulation are one in billions. But whether or not we're literally inside a computer is almost beside the point. 
Because the real question is this, what is more real, the matter we touch or the logic that governs how it behaves? If reality is information, then everything we know, every galaxy, every atom, every law of physics, is part of a vast, dynamic pattern, evolving according to rules we're only just beginning to decode. And if consciousness plays a role in shaping what's observed, then we are not just passive observers. We are participants in a reality that reacts to questions, that changes when measured, that listens. And so, as we zoom out from galaxies and black holes and cosmic webs, and zoom inward into quarks and quantum fields and math, we begin to see the same thing. Not randomness, not chaos, but structure, pattern, design. The universe is speaking. The question is, do we understand the language? So, what if we're just scratching the surface? What if everything we know is just a shadow of a much deeper reality? These discoveries don't just change our understanding of physics, they force us to ask deeper questions. Why are we here? What is this place, and are we alone in it? The universe is not what you think, but maybe, just maybe, it's more beautiful, strange, and alive than we ever imagined.